Hi there. My name is Julia Berkey. I work for the Montana DNRC as the Forestry Outreach Specialist. And as part of that position, I coordinate the Fire Adapted Montana Learning Network, which is a network that brings together individuals and organizations from across the state who are working to create more fire adapted communities in their local area. And so within that network, it kind of allows for resource sharing, it allows for folks to learn from each other's successes and challenges, and kind of just amplifies um, efforts towards fire adapted communities across the state. And so because of my work with Fire Adapted Montana Learning Network, Bridget asked me to present to you today on this question of kind of what is a fire adapted community? What do we mean when we talk about fire adapted communities? And for those of you who have a fire background or maybe have attended webinars like this before, you may recognize fire adapted communities as one leg of the national cohesive strategy, with the other two being safe and effective wildfire response and resilient landscapes. And so within this framework, a fire adapted community is defined as human populations and communities that are, are, that are as prepared as possible to receive, respond to, and recover from wildfire. Now, the Fire Adapted Communities Learning Network, which is a national network that does similar work to what we do with the Fire Adapted Montana Learning Network, except on a national scale, provides a little bit of a broader definition. They say that a fire adapted community is a community that understands its risk and takes action before, during, and after the fire in order to become more resilient to wildfire. And fire adapted community members are both informed and prepared, and they're working together, together to collaboratively plan and take action to better live with wildland fire. And so this definition is a little broader, and to accompany this definition, the National Learning Network created this, um, this graphic which kind of presents fire adapted communities as a more comprehensive framework that really includes um, multiple possible actions that a community could undertake in order to become more adapted to and resilient to wildfire. So this graphic was actually designed by those fire adapted community practitioners who are members of the National Learning Network. And it helps, and within this framework, it really helps to categorize the work that those professionals have been doing in their own communities in order to make them more fire adapted. So within this framework, that effect, safe and effective wildfire response and landscape scale treatments are both included as kind of components of a fire adapted communities framework because they both are important in order for a community to be resilient to and able to respond to wildfire. And, there, and those, are those are components within the broader framework that also includes um, components like public health and prevention and wildfire recovery and resident mitigation, all of which are presented as equally important components of a broader framework to creating fire adapted communities. And so within this framework, um, this wheel is organized with two kind of, two uh, is organized with two themes in mind. So the first is the inner circle, which is the main th themes or categories that often pop up in communities that are working to become more fire adapted. So a community or a council like Fire in the Root may work in all of these areas or focus on just some, and that focus may shift over time. So you may start just working in landscape treatments, prevention and resident mitigation, and then over time expand to include more public health experts, more business entities, or vice versa. It's really depending on where you are at as a community at this time and where you grow to be. And on the outside of the circle are all the potential actions or programs that a community can do on its path to becoming more fire adapted. And each one of those actions or programs will contribute to one of those components. So again, if we're talking about landscape scale treatments, we're looking at thinning operations, we're looking at creating few fuel breaks, or maybe conducting prescribed fire among other treatment options. And then with prevention, we're doing public education campaigns, we're conducting workshops, and we're um, making sure that public safety is communicated. Kind of with, uh, with that overview, it is important to note that this graphic is not comprehensive. There are other things that can be done to improve fire adaptation that are not shown anywhere on this graphic. And it's also not a checklist. So fire in the root, you as a council don't need to take this framework and then divvy it up amongst members and tackle all of it all at once. Right now, not all programs or actions may be priorities for your community. 
What's useful is to really think about what challenges you currently have, as well as what assets that you currently have at this time to identify the current priorities for your county and for your communities. And I really wanna uh, stress that I say current because those priorities or those assets or those community members will change over time as the community changes. And so it's important to keep this in mind, work within this framework um, or any other priorities that you may have and be able to adapt to what it means to become a fire adopted community. But this graphic is still really helpful because it gives those who are looking to make their community more fire adapted some examples of the specific programs and the specific actions that they can take in order to start or continue the process of becoming a fire adopted community. It's really intended to kind of inspire folks like yourself to consider a whole range of issues and actions as you work towards fire adaptation. So that was a lot of information on what exactly we mean when we say fire adopted community. But really to summarize quickly, the answer is basically, it depends. Anything that is done to make a community more resilient to the inevitable wildfire impacts that come from living in fire adopted ecosystems are important. And really, uh, local councils or coordinating groups like Fire in the Root are often crucial when it comes to creating more fire adopted communities because they can ensure that the community as a whole is represented and that each um, important community member or important organization is doing their part in working towards creating fire adopted communities. So what's exciting about where you are as you kind of set up and get Fire in the Root rolling is that you get to decide what slices of this pie, or maybe just one slice right now, are you going to focus on? How will you divvy up this work? Accounts like this can be really important in coordinating efforts. So maybe right now it's the Forest Service focusing on the landscape scale treatments. And the hospital or the local health clinic is working on getting the word out of preparing for smoke impacts to help. And homeowners or community groups are mobilizing to treat the home admission zone and work in that resonant mitigation sphere. That's just some examples, and it's something that you as Fire in the Root Council member and a broader council can think about and prioritize. And again, I'll emphasize that over time, that focus might change. You know, the people leading the charge might turn over. Um, you might have decide that you've done really good work in one sphere and want to shift that focus somewhere else. Or maybe a new, new members have come onto the council who can help strengthen your outreach in different spokes of this wheel. But the great thing about forming a collaborative group like Fire on the Root and like this council is that you can really keep the momentum going and you can keep lines of communication open between the different players involved in creating a fire adopted community. And so to summarize uh, the answer to that original question, fire adopted communities work collaboratively to become more resilient to wildfire. There is no roadmap to becoming a fire adopted community. Priorities will change over time. Goals will change over time. There's also no endpoint to developing a fire adopted community. Uh, we live in, again, like I said, we live in a fire adopted ecosystem. This landscape has been shaped by fire. And so there's no endpoint. Um, it's on, ongoing work that at best will just get easier as a solid foundation is built and laid over time. But councils or coordinating groups like Fire in the Root are often crucial to ensuring that the work is representative of the broader community and really capitalizes on all available assets in the community. So that everyone is represented, everyone is working to that ultimate goal of a community that's more resilient to wildfire. And so with that, I will leave those points with you. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Bridget can supply you with my contact information. I can talk about fire adopted communities all day. I can share that framework if you want it for future reference. But definitely feel free to reach out and good luck as you go forward in creating this council. Thanks so much.